Coming up today on the Raiders Report, I'm going to be breaking down and ranking the top 10 Raiders that you need to watch up against the Dallas Cowboys. It's Mitchell Rands here from Chat Sports, and if you think for a second that this final preseason game doesn't mean anything to me, I'm going to look dead in the eyes to every single one of y'all and say, this game means more to me than any other preseason game in hell. And I'm not going to say it means more than the regular season. My fiance is a Cowboys fan. Chugs' fiance is a Cowboys fan. The second biggest channel next to the Raiders report here at Chat Sports is the Cowboys report. I love Tom, but he's been talking a lot of shit this week. And I want to take down the Cowboys report on the field and off the field, and I need your help to do it. So make sure you're subscribed to the Raiders Report because we're going to be live for this show. It's going to be starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time, one hour before kickoff. On top of that, Chugs and I are going to be tailgating at AT AT&T Stadium before the game starts. So if you know you're going to be there, hit Chugs up on Twitter, hit me up on social media. Let's have a beer, maybe two, and let's see where the night takes us. Here we go, the top players to watch up against the Dallas Cowboys. Coming in here at number 10, it's Malcolm Kuntz. And I don't know if Kuntz is going to make this 53-man roster to me. He's been very impressive this season. In the preseason, I get it. It's the preseason. However, though, his ability to pass rush is really impressive to me. His run-stopping ability, it's not there. Is he a great tackler? No. But the name that I will always bring up because it is a name that I will continually think about when the Raiders' defensive line was at least a little bit better was Max Crosby's rookie season, and one of his best buds was Benson Mayoa. And Benson Mayoa, all he did was he came on third down, he pinned his ears back, and he got after the quarterback. To me, Kuntz can be an interesting player in terms of getting after the quarterback. And if that's his entire role this season, that's an okay role. Can he go into Dallas this week? Can he pin his ears back? And can he make a few big plays? That's what I'm going to be looking for out of Malcolm. Let's go to number nine here on the list. It's Dalton Wagner at offensive tackle. Now, Wagner, to me, his first preseason game was a lot better than his second preseason game. And I knew when the Raiders signed him as a UDFA out of Arkansas that honestly from a from a rookie standpoint he is an above average run blocker he's mean he's nasty he's 680 320 pounds because usually in the run blocking game you can use your physicality and physical dominance on the opposing defense in terms of pass blocking it's a lot more footwork and technique he doesn't quite have that yet And for the Raiders, that's more important because of who's going to be playing quarterback this season in terms of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, I will say that he's going to be battling with Justin Huron. He's going to be battling with a few other players to get that final roster spot. Jermaine Illuminor, going to make the roster. Thayer Munford, going to make the roster. If this Raiders team decides to keep 10 offensive linemen, maybe Wagner makes it. If he has a good, and I mean a really solid game, If I was this Raiders organization, I would rather bet on Dalton Wagner than Justin Huron. And honestly, it's not close to me. Let's go to number eight here. It's McClendon Curtis, another UDFA offensive lineman. Because to me, Curtis has been spectacular. If you were to look at all the PFF grades for the Las Vegas Raiders this season, McClendon is number one with a 92 overall grade. He's been solid in run blocking. He's been solid in pass blocking. And one of the reasons why I was really excited last season when the Raiders drafted Dale Parham is because an offensive lineman, and I'll say one of the toughest positions in the NFL is to play offensive lineman. And I've talked to numerous NFL scouts. I've talked to numerous NFL players. And one of the top traits that people look for in an offensive lineman is your ability to be able to process information quickly because whether it's a blitz, you got to put your body in the right spot. McClendon has done a great job with that early on. And against the Dallas Cowboys, I want to see how he's able to handle their pressure because they're going to try to bring it no matter who's playing quarterback. So let's play a game here because this is what the Raiders report is all about. And you know what? 
It's going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So you're about to get hit with a YouTube bad break. I want you to scroll on down right now and let me know if you could keep only one of these players on your 53-man roster, who would you keep? Dalton Wagner, Natane Moody, McClendon Curtis, Justin Huron. After this YouTube bad break, I'm going to give you my answer. I would love to be able to keep Dalton Wagner and McClendon Curtis, but I'm honestly, if I can only keep one out of that list, I am going to keep McClendon Curtis. Is offensive tackle a bigger need since Brandon Parker is done for the season? Yes. Is Natane Moody shown flashes of good? Yes, he has. The last preseason game, I didn't love what I saw on tape. But what I look for is a player that has a lot of versatility. And McClendon has that to me. Plus, he's probably got more of the mental side of the offensive line game down more than Wagner, more than Natane already. Definitely more than Justin Huron. And when you got an offensive line coach like Carmen Brasillo, I would bet on McClendon Curtis being a reliable starting offensive lineman. And if you can get that out of the UDFA, that's a big time win. Let's go to number seven here in terms of players to watch up against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go with Meek Robertson at cornerback. Now, I'll be curious to see how they use him because. To me, the only way he's going to be able to make a real impact this upcoming season for this team is if he's out there playing in the slot. I think Amika's a dog. He probably wants to be an outside corner, but he's just got to be able to face the facts a lot of the times and just realize that he's just too small to play outside. However, when he's played in the slot, he's done a lot better. When the Raiders want to run more nickel coverages or if there's four wide, five wide scenarios you bring out, Robertson, he can go out there and he can compete a little bit. I'm good with that. But to me, in this type of matchup here, he's going to be going up against, like, he needs to outplay Sam Webb. He needs to outplay Tyler Hall. He needs to outplay all the corners because I don't know if the Raiders keep seven. If the Raiders keep six, Amik might be on the outside looking in. Why? Because I know the Raiders are very high on this next guy coming up here at number six, and that is Sam Webb. I personally believe Amig Robertson is a better corner than Sam Webb right now. However, I do think if you were to ask me, Mitch, who's the better corner next season, I might be willing to place my money on Webb. And I, one of the traits that I love in players, and this is the thing that I love about Webb, he, and I throw, I've thrown out this scenario or example before, but it's more just because I think Raider fans get it when I say it. Certain players remind me of Nicholas Morrow. Nicholas Morrow was one of the Raiders' best linebackers when he left this team. But he was a UDFA, got better, got better, got better, and got better. That's what I see in Webb. You already saw when he got playing time, he did. He got better. He's getting better in the offseason. And now what you see where he's at in the preseason, he continues to get better. I want players that are coachable. I'm not saying that Amik's not coachable. But Amik has had to deal with a lot of other defensive coordinators, a lot of different head coaches where Webb has only dealt with Josh McDaniels, only dealt with Patrick Graham. If I was an NFL team, I'd be more willing to invest in Webb's future than Amik Robertson's future. And because of that, I think Webb might have the advantage over Amik. But let's play another game here, and this is going to be a common theme on today's show. If you could keep only one of the corners that are on this roster right now, who would you keep? I know it's a tough question. Probably two guys on this list make it. But I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking, you can only keep one. Are you going to keep Sam Webb? Are you going to keep David Long? Are you going to keep Amig Robertson? Or would you keep Tyler Hall? I want to know your answer right now down in the comments. If I am basing it on this season and this season alone, I'm probably going to keep Amig Robertson. And the only reason why I say that is because in a pinch, Amik can play outside and he can play inside. If I got a bet on a player's future, right? You and I both, let's just say McDaniels and Ziegler, you know that they're going to be around for the next three years. Then I'll take Sam Webb. I know David Long might be the best player right now out of that list, but he's only on the outside. And I'm pretty confident in our outside corner ability with Jacorian, with Nate Hobbs, he can play outside too. With Marcus Peters, Brandon Faison's going to end up making this roster. So to me, I'd probably bet on a Meek. But if I long term, I'll go Sam Webb. If anybody's looking to make a bet right now, I'll tell you right now, I got a hell of a deal. 
If you go to BetUS, chatsports.com slash Raiders, promo code Raiders125, for those of you that watch this show for a long time, you'll know. You get a hell of a deal, 125% deposit bonus. First time betters, you put down 100, get $125 for free. Here's the thing. At the time that I'm making this video, Jerry Judy is expected to miss several weeks with his hamstring injury, but it's not season ending. Right now, if you go to BetUS, the Raiders are four and a half point underdogs to the Denver Broncos. Who's going to be catching passes from Russell Wilson? I have absolutely, positively no idea. You can make that bet right now. If you're like Mitch, I'd rather make a bet on the game this upcoming weekend. Hey, it's all good. Why not do both? Because you're getting free money anyway. The deal that I'm making right now, if you're watching a preseason game and you bet the under on a preseason game, I'm just going to look. You got to do better with your life. Like, I, I don't know what you're doing. You can do better. If you're watching preseason football, you should only bet the over because that's worth your money. Like, I want points in the preseason. And right now, 38 and a half is the over bet in Raiders Cowboys on BetUS. The Raiders have scored 34 points in back-to-back -back games. I'm giving you the free money with the deal anyway. $125 for free if you put down 100 Here's a way to make a few extra bucks. You can risk $10 to win $9. It's a good deal. Risk $10, put extra $9 in your pocket. I don't know about y'all. That's an extra margarita, and I could use an extra margarita. Let's go to the number five player on my list to watch against Dallas. Wide receiver Trey Tucker. I do anticipate to see Tucker out there onto the field. I know he's a locked player in terms of making this roster, but the reason why I want to see Trey out there is because in the first preseason game, he was a loser to me. In the second preseason game, he was a loser to me. And did you see the flashes? Have you seen flashes in the preseason from Trey Tucker? No doubt about it. There's a few plays you're like, holy shit, this kid is fast. He's electric. And every time he's on the field, defensive coordinators have to pay attention. That's just a flat out, that's the truth. But we also have seen him have drop issues. And he also dropped a touchdown. I want to see his confidence get brought up. But I also want to see the Raiders and how they continue to use him in pre-snap motion. Because that's going to be a really big part of this Raiders offense with Jimmy Garoppolo. And I also want to see Aiden O'Connell cook with him a little bit more. Let's go to number four here. I'm going to cheat a little bit because it's not just one player. And I hope that the Raider fans that are watching the show can understand when I say I'm watching the entire defensive tackle room. Realistically, if I would have showed my top 10 Raiders players that I'm watching this upcoming week, I could have put all 10 of these players or all nine of them on this show. I couldn't tell you who's making this roster. I know Bilal Nichols going to make it. I believe Jerry Tillery is going to make it. Byron Young's a lock to make it. He ended up practicing today on Thursday. After that, I think anything goes. John Jenkins has been impressive. Adam Butler has been impressive. Nesta Jade Silvera is a good run stopper. However, the Raiders have more invested in Matthew Butler. They have more invested in Neil Farrell Jr. They just went out and signed Costin. Like, now, Costin's not going to make it. He's more of like a Kyle Pecco type of player. Now, Pecco asked to be released, and that's why he was ultimately let go. But this defensive tackle room is one of the worst in the league. That's the truth. And it's a competition that the Raiders need to be better at. It's a battle that I'm watching, and I hope that the Raiders are smart and put all these DTs out there. That way, we can see. Whoever doesn't play, though, in this game, I'm telling you right now at defensive tackle, keep that in mind because I think that means that they're making the 53. At number three here, I'm going to go linebacker Drake Thomas in the UDFA out of NC State. He's been spectacular. Like, I love players that give effort. I will always bet on guys that show... Game in and game out. Every single practice that he's going to go out there and he's going to give it his all. He had 12 tackles last week against the Rams, which led the Raiders. It led the entire preseason for most tackles in a game. And I'm going to look at all you right now and tell you, Drake Thomas is not the most athletic player out there on the field. But the trait that I love, the quality in a player that I love like Thomas is he reminds me of Max Crosby. I know. Wait, wait, wait. He is not nearly as talented as Crosby. But the reason why Max isn't just a great player and why he's elite is because of the motor, because of the relentlessness, because of his determination. And that's what Thomas does. Like, there was a lot of scouts out there that said, Max Crosby isn't that great of an athlete. Now, Max worked his tail off and always found himself near the football. That's what Drake Thomas does. He always finds himself 
near the ball. And you can say what you want about athletic qualities. When you have awareness, when you can anticipate where the ball is going, that goes a very, very far way. Roberts Blaine going to make this roster. Divine Diablo locked and loaded. Amari Bernie going to make it. After that, I think it is up for grabs here a little bit. And yes, you got Drake Thomas. Yes, you got Luke Masterson. The Raiders signed Isaac, my favorite last name on this team, Dark Angelo, a few, literally yesterday, for those of you watching this live. But then, to me, he's not even the top linebacker that you should be watching in this preseason game. The top linebacker that y'all should be watching is Curtis Bolton. And he's been phenomenal this preseason. I don't know if there's been a Raiders player on defense that has boosted their stock more than Bolton. The biggest knock on him entering this offseason is his inability to cover. And he's done a much better job at being able to cover. Bolton is a better athlete than Drake Thomas. However, I do think Thomas is a smarter player. Bolton, though, is a guy that I believe more in in terms of special teams. Special teams on this organization with McDaniels, with Ziegler, with Tom McMahon, the Raiders special teams coordinator coach, that weighs dividends. And Bolton has been flying all over the field. He's been asked to do a lot of things, and he's answered the call. In the preseason, when you're asked to do something and you answer it, that means a lot. Now, when you're asked to do something else, you answer that and you and it just keeps going, your stock continues to rise and rise and rise. And Curtis Bolton right now would have been a player that I told y'all had 0% chance to make this roster last month. I'm telling you right now, he's at least got a shot. So let's play this game, and I love this game. If you could keep only one linebacker from the three names that you see on screen, who would you keep? Would you keep Curtis Bolton, type CB? Maybe you'd keep the UDFA Drake Thomas, type DT, or... Would you keep Luke Masterson? Because I just hyped up Bolton a lot. I just hyped Thomas up a lot. But when I do my 53-man roster projections, when I leave that 53-man, and I encourage everybody to do it. Do it with, hey, you keep three linebackers, you keep four linebackers. Try it where you keep five linebackers. That's where it's really tough. But the rosters that I love is when I keep four linebackers on this roster. And who, I do my, who was I debating between before? It was Drake Thomas and Luke Masterson. Now, it's got to be between these three guys right here. Judging by this chat, it's DT. The way that I think the Raiders are going to go, they're going to go with Luke Masterson. Masterson's more of a coverage linebacker, where if this team decides to go five LBs, that's where I think the other two can get into play here. But both I anticipate to be on the Raiders practice squad. Let's go to the next and the number one player that everyone's going to be watching. And I shouldn't have even... This is a no-brainer. This is a dull type of moment. It's Aiden O'Connell. I mean, spam those AOCs in the chat right now. Has there been a better quarterback in the preseason than Mr. O'Connell? I'll wait because the answer is no. 26 of 36, 304 yards, three touchdowns, quarterback rating of 122.8. I'll tell you this right now. I knew Aiden was going to be good this preseason. I did not anticipate for him to look the way that he does. He is passing the eye test. He is doing all of the right things. His ability to get receivers open, lead guys, the accuracy, the footwork, his anticipation for blitzes, standing in there tough. And if a few people didn't drop a few balls, I'm telling you right now, these numbers would look a lot better. Aiden looks like the real deal. And I'm telling you, if I'm Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that I don't get hurt this season because if Aiden steps in, I don't think he loses the job. I don't. From what I have seen, and I get it, I've only seen one drive from Jimmy, but go back and watch the tape. Aiden O'Connell's arm is light years ahead of what Garoppolo's is right now. Garoppolo might have the weakest arm in the NFL. Now, I get that doesn't only mean that he's not going to be able to execute the offense. Garoppolo's going to execute this offense. But I really, really believe if Aiden gets out there, I don't know if he gets the job back. So if I'm Garoppolo, I'm trying to stay healthy. The last thing that I'll say here on today's show is this. Listening to McDaniels talk and talking to some people who are close to this team, I don't anticipate to see many starters out there week three in the preseason game, which sucks. I bought tickets for Alex, my fiance. Her dad was his birthday present, and then Alex's mom. They're going to be sitting. I'm telling you all this right now. So if you see Alex, she's going to be sitting a few rows back, section 135, right behind the Raiders. If 
you see her, say hello. Say hello to the fam. I would definitely greatly appreciate it. Yeah, you can buy her a drink. Just She's probably going to want tequila, and I don't really think that she should be drinking tequila around her dad, but hey, what do I know? Anyway, I'll say, though, one of the most important notes that you should make is the players that don't play in this game because the players that don't play in the Week 3 preseason game, from what I have heard, there's other teams doing their own thing. From what I've heard, the players who don't play in this game, I think you can almost check them in as saying these are going to be the guys that they have locked and loaded making that 53-man roster. So one more time here, if you want to take a screenshot, you can make sure you post it on Twitter, make sure you tag me, make sure you tag Chugs, Instagram, Twitter, all of those good places. And if you haven't already, tell your friends to subscribe to the Raiders report. The link is flashing down there below. Send that to a few Raider fans because the more and more Raider fans we get here, the more wild and crazy shit that we can continue to do here on this show. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Be on the lookout for Jeremy and I on Saturday because we will be tailgating at Raiders-Cowboys preseason game.